Hey everybody, today I have an in-depth comparison video between two OKW units, Volksgrandeers and Panzerfusiliers. When playing with the Breakthrough or Grand Offensive Doctrines, the OKW player is confronted with the choice of two different mainline infantry units, each with their own pluses and minuses, and today I would like to break those pluses and minuses down so you can make a more informed choice about your mainline units. At first glance, these units are very similar. The Volksgrenadiers cost 260 manpower and take up 7 population. The Panzerfusiliers are slightly more expensive at 270 manpower and also take up 7 population. In the very early game, the Volksgrenadiers do not have access to their flame grenades or Panzerfaust, but they are able to build sandbags. The Panzerfusiliers, on the other hand, do immediately have access to their anti tank rifle grenade. However, they are unable to make any sandbags or other modifications. It's also worth noting that they do not have access to the salvage ability like Volksgrands or Stern Pioneers. Let's take a look at how their combat abilities differ in the early game. I have here displayed the DPS charts for Volksgrandiers and Panzerfusiliers. As you can see, the Volksgrands out DPS the Panzerfusiliers at every range, except for max range, where the Panzerfusiliers have a very slight edge. This difference is especially notable when fighting conscripts because the Volksgrenadiers actually out DPS conscripts at close and medium ranges, whereas the Panzerfusiliers do not. Another slight early game difference is that the Volksgrenadiers have slightly earlier access to the anti infantry flame grenades after just building the SWS supply half track. The Panzerfusiliers, on the other hand, have to fully convert the first headquarters building before they have access to their anti infantry grenades. And it's also at this point where the Volksgrenadiers get access to their Panzerfausts. Speaking of the Panzerfaust, it does function a little bit differently from the Panzerfusiliers AT grenades. First of all, the Panzerfaust has only 10 range, whereas the Panzerfusiliers AT grenade has 12 range. The Panzerfaust, however, has a much shorter cooldown at only 15 seconds, whereas the anti tank rifle grenade has a 26 second cooldown. Now, let's talk about how these units stack up in the mid-game. After converting your first headquarters building, you will have access to weapon upgrades with both of these units. Volkskrenz can get two STG-44 rifles, and Panzerfusiliers have access to the recon package, which gives them three G-43 rifles. They also have access to Panzerstrex, but we're not going to talk about that as it's not recommended, and it's also not a very good comparison. The recon package also has some other benefits, First of all, it gives the squad the ability to reinforce to 6 men, and it also gives them an additional 7 sight. Now let's also take a quick look at what benefits the units get from the first 3 stars of veterancy. The Volksgrenadiers get a total of minus 24% received accuracy, plus 30% accuracy, and minus 20% weapon cooldown. The Panzerfusiliers, on the other hand, get a little bit more. They get plus 40% accuracy, minus 20% weapon cooldown, minus 23% received accuracy, they also get faster ability recharges, and also the extremely useful flare ability. Now let's take a look at the DPS of both these squads with their upgrades. The units are relatively equal at mid-range. However, the Panzerfusiliers have a huge advantage at close-range engagements, and a minor advantage at long-range engagements. There's also a significant difference in the squad's accuracy on the move. The Volksgrenadier STG-44 loses about 40% of his DPS while moving, whereas the Panzerfusiliers G-43 only loses about 10% of his total DPS, making Panzerfusiliers much more efficient at closing the distance and chasing down recruiting squads. Now a couple final notes about the unit's late game utility. Looking at the squad's VET 4 and 5 abilities here, the Volksgrenadiers receive a plus 7 sight range bonus in cover, this is the same as the Sight Rage bonus that the Recon package gives the Panzerfusiliers, although the Panzerfusiliers don't have to be in cover to benefit from it. Volksgrenz also receive passive healing out of combat. Panzerfusiliers, on the other hand, gain a plus 15% capture rate, and at Vet 5, they gain the Sprint ability for 15 munitions. I also want to pay special attention to the Panzerfusilier Flare, which is useful throughout the game, but especially late game to coordinate tank pushes and artillery strikes. The Flare reveals a large area for about 30 seconds, and of course, unlike planes, it cannot be shot down. Also, with a relatively cheap cost of 35 munitions and a very fast cooldown of only 18 seconds, you can spam these flares to keep the same part of the map revealed, 
or reveal multiple parts simultaneously. To sum up, the Panzer Fusiliers are the superior unit in the mid and late game, and only slightly inferior to the Volksgrenadiers in the early game. Their most glaring weakness is the inability to put down green cover, which the Volksgrenadiers can. In 1v1 games, I recommend having an even mix of Panzer Grenadiers and Volksgrenadiers because it's important to have green cover throughout the map. In larger game modes, however, it's completely plausible to build only a single squad of Volksgrenadiers, or even none if the map has lots of green cover or buildings to use. Thank you all very much for watching this video. I hope you learned something, and if you did, please like and subscribe.